This uh, portion of this demo, working with um, a media composer cut that we created here in the other bay. Um, in this case, I have a couple options when I work with the media. I can create the, take the media that created through Metafuse or through AMA, and I can use that directly in DS to finish. Or I can go right back to the R3D files and use those instead. Um, the good thing about going back to the R3D files is I can change the framing because I, these were shot 4K, so I have all the extra um, pad to play with. I can also change the color settings. When you go through Metafuse or AMA, at some point you're going to transcode, and it bakes in the color information. It also bakes it to a 1080 frame size. Okay? With DS, though, I'm not limited to resolution. So I can work with 6K, 4K, I think all the way, uh, I don't know, what's the upper limit, 32K or yeah. something crazy like that. I've never done it. I don't know if it would work, but that's theoretically those are the numbers. So definitely a 4K frame, 5K, not a problem. We can work with that. So I have two options when I import this stuff. I can work um, from the MXF media. It may be good enough. It may be clean enough. In this case, they made DNX uh, 185 media, and I could definitely finish with that. Um, there's also, I can also start with that media, and at a later date, when the R3D is available, I can just flip a switch and go to the R3D files instead. All of my effects, my composites, my tracks, all that stuff will follow through. I may have to change my color settings, of course, because the R3D files may have a different look, depending on how I set up my, uh, my, my import. So I'll show you really quick. What we have are, from the Avid, you go to File, Send to Avid DS, and it creates these AFE files. Really hard to see on uh, this left monitor, but I have this little file called an AFE file, Avid File Exchange, and I basically just double click that, and it opens up and it shows me my Avid bin, um, which is this little guy way down here. So I have this bin, and if I open that up, I've got all my individual clips, just like you created at Media Composer, with the final sequence. And we're going to take that final sequence, and we're going to drop it on the timeline. I'm going to tell it through a checkbox to use the MXF media. So I'll find my sequence, and we'll tell it, use the MXF, and drag and drop that. Let's see if you see the continue. It's going to build the timeline. It's going to build master clips in a bin for me. It's going to put all the effects together. Um, and then I'll be ready to do my final conform. So there are going to be some effects that don't 100% work, like things like Spectrum Matt and Animat. I'm going to have to rebuild those. But if I'm going back to the R3D files, I would have to redo those anyways, because keying off of DNX media is going to be different than keying from the R3Ds. So this is my MXF media. It's definitely clean enough to work with. Oh, we've got multiple tracks going here. I didn't delete everything from the old session. But anyway, basically I have these guys shot on green screen, and then I'm going to go ahead through DS and start compositing all this and building uh, my final composite. The, um, the reason I'm going back to R3Ds in this case is maybe the creative, the client wants to repo, repro this frame, repo it. Um, I can do that if I bypass this MX. This is the MXF frame here on top that we're looking at. So if I were to resize this to say 200% to emulate a 4K frame, it gets pretty jagged. It um, breaks up really quickly. So um, I have this. Um, this is the MXF media created at 1080, and I'm blowing it up 200%. It doesn't hold up very well. It gets soft really quickly. Also, the colors are not quite um, where I'd like them to be. So to show you the difference, I've also brought in this same um, conform. I did it again, this time telling it link back to the R3D media. And that basically looks like, and we'll scan <coughs> for our folder. Select our root folder. Here's where our red files live. Uh, we'll scan. And it opens up the red interface. Ask me how I'd like to set up my, uh, if I want to use color model one or two, um, the debayer detail, the red gamma, what kind of color space I'd like to work in. Let me just cancel that. And in the interest of holding this demo to a reasonable time, take a few minutes to conform that, to debayer, link up all the files, build the effects, et cetera. I've already pre built this thing, um, I've pre conformed it. So if I look at the, um, the footage, this is on the left is my uh, MXF media with the color left baked in. On the right is the dynamic R3D file. And that color setting can be changed at any time just by selecting the clip and going into its properties. I can reset the uh, ISO, the exposure, the color temperature, all the rest of it just by going in here. And that will then link back to the, uh, the original file on the timeline. So it gives me a lot of options to, uh, to work with the creatives. All right. Um, is that color tool that you just pulled up, the, the, the adjustment tool, can that be set through importing in? It can. It can. Yeah, okay. I know where your question is yeah, going. Yeah. You. RLX, um, RSX, RSX or, yeah. or RMD, whatever the camera ones are. Yeah, they're, uh, the 
RSX is yeah. the text file. The yeah, exactly. Text file. Right. Yeah, no so problem. Absolutely. Yep, you have a question? Um, can you slide the, the, the line more to the left just to see the hair with the uh, after D instead of the previous? Okay. So definitely more, a little more detail. This is pretty good um, MXF media. It's not, not bad at all, but like I said, the problem is if I blow this thing up to 200%, it's going to look pretty bad. Right now what? How, how we're at 100%. Right. Yeah. So to show you on the R3D file, I can repo this thing and um, do qu a quick little pan. Let me uh, bypass and add a DVE. And so I'm starting at uh, 100%. This is the 100% of the R3D file. And then doing a little pull out to 47%. Oops. And it stays clean all the way through. Okay. So if I look at these files, um, this is the 1080 frame. You can see on the uh, projector here. But if I look on this left monitor, zoom up a little bit. On the left monitor, if I zoom back, I've got all that material available. I've got a little grid here showing me my 1080 frame. And then I've got everything outside of that available if I want to repo the shot. So that's why it's nice to have that in here. Um, Those repos are key frameable? They are key frameable. That's what I did on the uh, first one here with the girl. It starts at 100% and then uh, drops down to 47%, which is about uh, 1080, reducing 4K down to 1080. Okay, so I built this um, sequence, or, or a lot of things came over, but some things didn't. In fact, I have this brush. Let me take this off from the old session. Um, I have this brush. It's, it's, it's green, but they actually want it to be purple. She's throwing purple paint around. And I can right-click and open up a viewer for the offline so I can see that. So here's my, um, my green brush, and I want to make it this purple. Um, in DS, you can open up these little floating viewers wherever you like. You can focus it in on a certain aspect of a, a timeline or a node, and it'll show you what's going on at that point. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add a secondary cor color corrector to this. Okay, so here's my color corrector, and I have this tab for secondaries. So what I'm going to do is uh, just zoom in a little bit here so I can get this green. I'm going to pick this green color, and then I'm going to go ahead and spin it around to become purple. Or I can simply take the color picker and pick it right off the offline so I get the exact color. And then we'll add um, a little bit of softness just to take care of some of the noise here. And if I zoom back out then, I've got my purple brush. Okay, I've got another clip that I need to do something similar on, which is um, this one here. I've got some green paint on her leg. And what I want to do is make it um, purple and blue, light blue. So I can't really use the same effect again. If I copy it off the old clip and paste it on this clip, both lines become uh, purple. Okay, So I have to be a little more uh, constricted and um, focus where the effect is applied. And I'll do that by going into my graphics mode. And in here, I can draw spline shapes. And those could be um, color blend. It could be a negative effect. It could be a color correction with secondaries, which is what I'm going to do here. Escape. And let me see. Let me set up the uh, properties on this real quick. Change so it to secondaries, a, is there a limit to how many windows you can have? The, uh, 12 will play back real time. Okay. And then beyond that, you'll have to um, render. The, uh, Graphic shapes, when I'm going into power windows, those need to be rendered. It's a really quick render. But right now, those aren't real time. Uh, let me set this up real quick. My color correction. Same thing. We're going to go ahead and pick the green. And we'll spin it around to be purple. Oops. Like so. So I've got my purple color. And then the other one I want to make is um, blue. So we'll just make a duplicate of this shape, and we'll drag it over. Okay, and then this one we're going to spin it over to the uh, blue on the output. Oops. This doesn't work, right? Something like that. So I've got my purple, and I got my blue. Now the thing is, this shot pans up, so I'm going to have to keyframe this, which I can do. So here at the beginning, I'll set a keyframe on my spline. And then navigate to the end frame, and we'll move this up. Take the whole spline shape and just shift it up. And then we've got our other shape below that. Same thing back at the beginning. Take the spline shape. Turn on auto key. Set a keyframe here. Navigate to the end. And we'll just shift that up and over a bit. Then once I've done that, I've got a little bit, actually, hang on one sec. I've got 
got the set of keyframe on the first one. There we go. Okay, then I've got a little bit of the brush showing over here on the uh, right edge of the screen. So I want to do the same thing, spline shape around that and uh, constricted secondary within that. So the same thing, drag. Make sure I just use the old shape. Copy and paste it, same as we've been doing. Um, it's also going to be purple to match the previous shot. We'll move that over. So then we'll just adjust the settings a little bit to include more of the, uh, the bristles here. 